Hey everybody, just thought I'd give you an update on how the garden is going and we're gonna do my best to make it a quick one. All of our late winter, early spring crops are now turning into seed crops. So the sugar snap peas, the tall telephone peas, and the little marvel peas, as well as the lettuces are all starting to go to seed. So are the turnips and we're just waiting for them to uh, ripen up. Some of these we're going to start taking out because they never bolted and it's time just to take them out of the ground. We'll probably have about two to three more weeks in these and try to do my best to let them dry on the plant before taking them down. I planted some corn and sunflower seeds in this area behind the uh, little A-frame here where the, you can see the hay. And it's probably the last time I will ever follow package directions on planting seed. I planted them a half an inch deep just as I was instructed and after three weeks I had very poor germination. I had two corn come up and that was it. I came back and decided to plant them just under the soil, probably less than a quarter inch below the soil. And now I have almost every single thing coming up. So now I'm about a month behind when I could have had these coming and, you know, just a lesson learned. You'll see this uh, pink pot here has got green globe artichokes and on the other side of the garden I've got some violetta artichokes trying to grow for my wife. So we'll see how those go. I had the same problem in these four rows where I planted okra. Very poor germination. Well, so poor nothing came up. So I came back with uh, some seed that I say from last year that I did not do a good job at saving at. I did not follow just standard practices. It, it was just a lazy man's thing. And, and now I'm getting poor germination because of my poor seed saving attempt on, on those okra seeds. So if I don't see anything coming up there soon, what's going to end up getting planted there is in the tray. In the tray, I have the pepper plants that we started back in the shed, and they're starting to bounce back a bit from having been unceremoniously dumped out here into the garden. And they, they weren't in shade for about three days, and now they're kind of bouncing back now that I put them out in the sun. So as they start putting on a couple leaves, and I think they're gonna transplant okay, I'm probably gonna move them out into these four rows. Generally speaking, everything in the garden is doing great. All of the trees are healthy. Several are putting on fruit. Some are uh, still setting fruit while others are starting to ripen already. You can see that the trellis is really starting to get away with itself, especially the Kentucky pole beans. They are making no beans. Well, that's a bad pun for that situation. They are certainly climbing the heck out of this trellis. They, they're about four inches shy of one horizontal there uh, to making it to the apex of the, of the trellis. So they are certainly the best climbers. I have had to come out here twice a week to train the cucumbers. They want to grow horizontal. They, they got about three feet out of the containers and wanted to grow horizontal. So to keep them growing as vertical as I can, I'm having to come out here about twice a week. That's just about how long it takes for them to grow to the point where they're sending out more tendrils and wanting to go horizontal with them and having to tie them so that they will go vertical. They don't seem to complain about it once I do it to them. They just then decide that they want to start going horizontal again. So, but they're also quite tall and attracting a huge amount of bumblebees. We are seeing a lot of activity on the vines. Uh, here we have tomato. This is the Amish paste tomato starting to put on flowers. The white cucumber has flowers all over the place and is setting fruit really well. The dwarf crookneck squash is also doing really well, putting on tons of flowers. And this one may be very close to actually being eaten. And I'm gonna take a minute to make no shame of it and just admit the fact that I'm not that experienced. You'll notice that on the side closest to us, in the front and in the back, I've got the crookneck squash up in the front, and I've got black beauty zucchini in the back. Now, I've never grown either one of those, but last year I tried growing some summer and some winter squashes, and it seems that every variety I tried planting last year wanted to vine. So I never even thought about the fact that some squashes will be a bush variety and not a vine variety. And so despite this being a climbing trellis, 
I've all but shot myself in the foot by planting these two varieties because they are a bush variety. They don't want to climb. Now I'm going to maximize my space and here after I get off the camera with you I will be planting some climbing pumpkins. I'm actually going to plant the Jack B. Little pumpkins uh, right here and I really don't see any particular use for them. I just really want to see pumpkins hanging from trellis. I just think it'll be cool looking. So I'm going to give it a try and the kids will get a kick out of painting them when it comes time uh, here in October. While I'm mentioning these Black Beauty zucchinis, I have to ask a question. The only flower I have ever seen come out of these are male. And I'm just wondering if for some reason there's something different about these zucchinis or why they would only be sending out male flowers. Everything else, the two different varieties of cucumbers, the summer squash, the, uh, the crookneck squash I just showed you, they are all producing fruit. But I have not seen anything except male flowers happening on these zucchini. And it's disappointing to the point where I'm almost ready to just cut them down and get them out of my way. So y'all tell me why am I only seeing male flowers so far on these zucchini? While we're talking about the container garden, I'll tell you another thought that's crossing through my mind right now. I think next year I'll tone it back a hair. I don't think I'll try to put as many plants in each container. Uh, you probably notice some of these aren't as deep of a green as you might expect them to be. And part of that is my inability to properly use my own camera. And part of that is that they do have a tinge of yellow to them. But I'm going to go out on a limb and say that I believe that they are being properly fed. I think it's a matter of having too many heavy feeders in one container. I think that they would be doing better if I had, for example, with the zucchini, one zucchini in each pot rather than two or three, or one cucumber in each pot rather than three or four. The summer squash and the cucumber seem to be doing okay. Maybe that's a part of my problem with the zucchini, but I'm not sold that that is my problem on the zucchini. So next year, my thoughts right this minute are that I might do less plants per container, hoping to get better and healthier plants so that I get more fruit on the vine. And then what I'll do with my companion plants, if they're not a nitrogen fixing companion plant, that I'll put my companion plants in different containers. The nitrogen fixing ones need to be in the same container so that when they're cut back, I can let the uh, nitrogen feed the other plant. But the ones that are just there for pest control, I think I'll do a staggered effect. So I'll have in one container a production plant, then in the next container some companion plants, and then a production plant, and so on and so forth down the line. So that's my line of thinking right now, but we've got a, several more months before the season is over, and my opinion just might be changed again. As you can see here, the borage is starting to blossom and we have got flowers coming out on every single plant in this container and in many of the other containers as well. It's quite a stunning flower. I've never had it on the property so I'm very anxious to see them all in bloom and to see all the pollinators attack them. These are the Boston pickling cucumbers and just one example of an obviously fertilized fruit. The bumblebees have been making quite a lot of effort over here. I'm very thankful for everything that they've been doing. Back behind the trellis, we have some sugar baby watermelon vines that have uh, really taken off here in the last two weeks. They are putting on a, a lot of vine, a lot of leaves, and in a few instances, some flowers. Here you can see a little ovary of a sugar baby watermelon, but I'm just not convinced that it actually was pollinated. Probably only need to give it about three days and we'll know for sure whether or not it's going to get any bigger. This is the tomato corner of the garden. And there's some tomatoes scattered about elsewhere. I'm sure you've kind of noticed as I've been walking around the garden. But I'll just stop to talk about these since it's the greatest concentration. Uh, you can probably tell I'm doing what's typically called the Florida weave. And I've been quite satisfied with it. Uh, I'm enjoying the fact that I'm using T-posts that I can use all around the property. 
inexpensive sisal twine from baling twine uh, from the farm supply store and I didn't have to spend almost six bucks on every single little tomato cage for each of these so I think it's a, a good method I'm getting good production the vines seem healthy and I'll probably continue doing it until further notice uh, in this particular corner you're actually looking at six different varieties of tomatoes and another disappointing example of making sure you understand a particular plant before buying it or putting it in as a part of your garden at the farmers market my son got excited about a tomatillo plant and so we purchased it for him and it wasn't after until it had put on dozens of flowers that came on and fell off and I told him you know the flowers will fall off and then the fruit will come behind it and no fruit ever came that I finally looked it up and found out that you have to almost guaranteed have to have a second or more tomatillo plant in order for it to pollinate it just will not pollinate itself so there you have it I'm excited to see a lot of our citrus that we purchased originally with flowers on them they died back uh, due to some cold weather and I was worried that that, that was going to be it you know we, we had bought them too early um, because they were in a nursery they had flowered too early for our climate but now that the uh, the weather is kind of stabilized and I put them in some bigger pots we have new buds forming these here are sweet kumquats I've never had one and I look forward to them hopefully fruiting later in the year and just as a note, I think somebody at one point had mentioned the concern for whether or not the trellis would hold all of the vegetables and fruit once they had uh, started ripening. And we needed to put these two baskets in here so that they could kind of get uh, rejuvenated and kind of put in a nursery as you were. They, they weren't being tended to because of where they were located. And so we brought them to the garden for a little more TLC. And each one of those is probably a good 25 pounds and the trellis didn't even flinch when I put them up there so I think that's a good starting point to understand that this should hold up to all of the fruit and veg that we're waiting to grow on this on another note I've been really excited to see a lot of the different flowers that are coming up this is the flower for the yarrow plant that we have and it's the only yarrow that we have so hopefully it'll go to seed really well and we'll be able to propagate it and get a whole lot more this is the flower on the citronella plant that we have that's another one I'd like to be able to propagate it just has a stunning flower on it and finally of all of the marigold that I planted by seed because uh, some over by the grapes were planted out of uh, nursery selections uh, these ones have certainly been the ones to really shine and it's been nice to see the marigolds uh, come up throughout the garden. Buying from the nursery is quick and easy, but there's just a certain pleasure that comes with seeing something you put in by seed come, come to fruition. Well, I hope you all have enjoyed a bit more of a haphazard and here and there update from all around the garden. Uh, we'll bring you back again probably in about another week and let you see how everything's doing. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.